Hey friends, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Amber and welcome to my channel. Been doing a um, dinner pantry challenge. Uh, so I don't even know what day we are on. Uh, find the right paper and I'll tell you guys. We are on day 10. All right. Yes. How many? Awesome. All right. We are on day 10 and today is Bell. And if you're new here, the challenge is I make dinner every night based on the letter of one of my animals. And again, I said we are on day 10 and we still have four more to go after that. So, Belle, she is, I'll get Josh to pick her up in a minute, um, so y'all can see, I, you've all seen her, or I, I can bring the camera to the floor, Belle, let's bring the camera to the floor, Belle, Belle, we know all the others are going to come, all right, are you wet, it's been a little rainy outside, uh-uh, go baby, this is Belle Spotlight, all right, this is Belle, she is, ah, uh -uh, baby. She is a rescue. Ah, uh -uh, you're you're wet. All right. Okay, so you got to see Belle. Um, she's wet. It's been raining. She's a rescue, but not your ordinary rescue. Like not rescued through a rescue group. Um, she is from a trailer park. Um. When we got her, we had actually went to this lady's home to pick up white albino rats. Those rats are no longer with us. Uh, they have passed on. But while we were there to get these albino rats for my daughter, this little girl, this little dog, she's running around the trailer park and she just comes up to us and she is the sweetest thing ever. She's filthy, but she's sweet. Well, I asked the lady, I was like, whose dog is this? Because she was just so pretty, and it's like, why is she running around? And the story that she tells me is, per the owner of the trailer park or their landlord, she belonged to no one. Um, apparently, the person that she saw bring the dog into the trailer park she also watched run over the dog and then proceed to say that it's not her dog. So, I asked her again and again, like, nobody's claiming this dog. Nobody would claim her. She basically was a trailer park mutt, um, stray trailer park stray. She just lived under the people's trailers. The one lady said she would put food out for her. So I decided that day she's coming home with me. And she is the sweetest thing ever, guys. Um, she's, her demeanor is just perfect. I don't know exactly what she is. I couldn't tell you. I don't know if she's Corgi mix, um, mini Sheltie. I have no clue. She is adorable. She is a sweetheart. I don't know her age, um, but she's ours. So we have her and her name is Belle. So starts with a B. And if you guys have paid attention to any of my other videos and my food hauls, you will notice that I have received corn tortillas. I have picked up some chili pods on clearance. Um, so we are gonna make some burrito tacos now. I am going to try, I need to wash my hands before I walk over there. I'm going to try to keep it as authentic as possible. Um, all right, so when I say as authentic as possible, I am not using goat meat. <laughs> I did my research on burrito tacos and apparently in Mexico, Berea stands for stew, but in Spanish, Berea stands for less than, um, and it comes from, Berea apparently got its name because they used to use uh, wild goat, 
Um, so it has changed and evolved over the years to mainly beef. Um, I'm not running away, guys. I'm just trying to get everything. I should have had it all over there, but you know. So I wanted to make do with what items I had on hand to make this, but yet as close to traditional as possible. So most people, they have started to use a beef roast and beef short ribs with the bone. You want the bone because the bone is what contains like the fat and collagen and stuff and gives it its flavor and the short ribs, you know, they, they have that fat. So <sighs> first things first, I'm going to turn this frying pan on because I need to de-seed some of these and go ahead and roast them up to get their flavor back. I need to go grab my meat because we need to go ahead and sear it so we can pull it out. All right, so let me go grab my meat, guys. Excuse me. All right. So I had in my freezer some boneless beef top round steak. I don't have a roast, but I have that. So we're going to use that. And then I have some beef ribs. And I just have two packs of those. We're going to use that. I am short on time. The traditional way is to cook it for like three hours in the oven. So, I may be able to do that, but we're going to have to get a move on it. So, first things first, like I said, I need all my stuff over here. I did not write down any ingredients. Um, I pulled the stuff out that I would need based off of the different ones I looked at. And let's see here. And like I said, we're going for as close to traditional as possible using the items we have on hand. All right. All right. So now, 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 cutting board. Excuse me. What's wrong? And apparently you just want to trim. And DC. Apparently it's super easy. See, the seeds just shake right on out. And then um, toasting them in a frying pan for just a few minutes apparently helps to bring their flavor back. I don't know. This is honestly, this is my first time ever making burrito tacos at home or queso burrito because that's my ultimate goal is not just burrito tacos, but queso burrito. We're going to do the whole frying up of them. All right. Oh, the side of my nose is itching. Like there's still a decent amount of seeds in there yeah and I mean if you like the spice everything I've read said you can leave 
uh, some of the seeds in. I don't want it to be too spicy for anybody. Um, I want everyone to be able to enjoy it. And I mean, there's some things I don't have. Like, I do not have any cilantro. It's going to be okay. Um, we're going to make do with what I got. All right, so that is getting hot. I need to go ahead and get some of this in there. And just We're just searing it up, guys. All right. Hopefully that'll, uh, I'm hoping it'll fit. It may not. I may have to use my other pan for that. Oh yeah, that's not gonna work for that, but I can go ahead and get this in here and sear it up. The main thing is, is getting the roast or whatever cut of beef you're using seared up. I need a plate to put this meat on or a platter or a bowl. I'll just move it over to a bowl because it just needs to be set to the side. And it doesn't have to be perfect, guys, but your goal is to just get it seared up on the sides to help lock in the juices. Now, I am going to slide that to the side over here. I don't need to wash it. I'm actually going to use it as is in a minute. Um, Move my cast iron. Where to set my oil? Drizzle just a little bit. Let it get hot real quick because it is not hot right now. I just put it on, so y'all can't even see what I'm doing. Sorry guys, y'all can see me, but you can't see what I'm doing. So we're just toasting up some of these.
This kind of just apparently helps to bring them back to life some, and then you're going to rehydrate them uh, when you start to make the consomme. Is that hot? That is. So now, and these aren't exactly short ribs, but they are beef ribs nonetheless. Um, we're going to make them work. They are bone in beef ribs, which is your important thing apparently is you want the bone in. This side isn't really going flat. We'll sear that side. I am going to have to get them cut to be able to get to fit back into my pot or my uh, Dutch oven. I thought they were already cut. So let's see here. Oh, somebody tried to cut that one in half. It didn't work out for them. I guess when the butcher was doing it. The meat cutter. Let me see something here. We can at least get that side. Here, guys, hold on. All right, so I have the 
chilies in there. I have some of these little tomatoes. I don't have any Roma tomatoes, so like I said, guys, I am using what I have on hand. But I have these tomatoes I've received from the pantry, and I don't want them to go to waste. And so we're going to just put them in there whole. Um, like I said, we're going to make queso burrito tacos as close to a, authentic as possible using what we have on hand. It may not be 100% um, authentic, but it's going to be pretty darn close. I thought about using some of the um, pork carnita because I do have some carnita meat out there. And you can make do with it. Um, and that might be more tomatoes than others call for. But guys, it's your recipe. You get in there and you make it your own. And again, use what you have. So, I need to get some water in here. Um, so, I'm just going to use my bowl to fill up with water. other stuff in here as well but we're going to bring it on up and let it come to a boil we'll reduce it to a simmer those peppers are going to rehydrate those tomatoes are going to get soft the onion the garlic we're putting other stuff in there as well so I need to get it cut up chopping it up because you are actually going to be blending this in a blender to make our consomme. I do have a mess on my counter now. I got stuff to clean up. This one's got a spot. Eh, no, that one was no good. I thought maybe it was just a spot, but it went all the way through. So that clove of garlic goes over to the scrap.
We're going to get onion in there. some of the bay, uh, bay leaves in here. So we put the bay leaves. And this one I thought was weird. Uh, one thing said you can use um, Mexican cinnamon, um, but I have regular cinnamon. And it said if using regular cinnamon, just do not grind it up. It has apparently a strong enough flavor. I'm not sure, but we put that in there. Cumin. We're good. We're just going to put it in here, guys. I don't know. I'll probably flavor as I go, like when I do the pull it out, because you are going to reserve some of this liquid to help assist thin it out. Um, we're going to... That was a ground oregano. You can use Spanish oregano if you have it. I do not. We have some smoked paprika. I thought this was unusual too, but we have some apple cider vinegar. Apparently it also calls for like an adobo sauce, like a Spanish adobo sauce. I do not have any on hand, but apparently the adobo sauce contains a lot of these same ingredients that we're using to make the consomme. It also, um, the thing, for the next part said beef broth like when you go to make your consomme you're going to add beef broth to it not in here but i don't actually have beef broth um on my shelf so i'm going to end up making some of this and having it to the side when that time comes but for now we're going to let this come to a boil simmer for about 20 minutes and i'm going to bring you guys back when that time when it's done and we're ready to move on to the next step All right, guys, so the stuff has gotten uh, tender. I have my blender. Um, and we are going to start getting this um, blended down. It's going to be done in batches. I am not going to try to get it all done at one time because, remember, when you're using something hot, don't fill your blender all the way up. So beef broth, I just reconstituted that and mixed in the cube. I'm just going to take this stuff, drain it, put it in here. the bay leaves so I take them out of everything else I gotta dig out I have a bay leaf in here and right here I should have paid attention to how many I put in there do you guys remember um oh I see some right there and you got to be careful if your blender is like mine it has uh, three sets of blades again I've had oh and we're not blending up the cinnamon All right, I've had this blender for probably seven years now. I've had it for a while, guys. I love it. It works. It 
it gets the job done. I don't see any more bay leaves, but I don't remember how many I put in there. some of the smaller chunks so and it's supposed to be more like a consomme so it needs to be thinned out some um, that is where this will come in handy um, measuring
can strain it to get these um, pieces out, which I am about to do because I do need to get it as um, silky smooth, I guess. Like, you want to consummate. You don't want it really thick. And I'm struggling, guys, because my beef ribs are not going to fit in here. I'm short on time. They won't fit in my Instant Pot. So we're just going to do the best we can. I do need to strain that. Which means I'm going to dirty another bowl. It's okay, guys. It's not the end of the world. Just dishes. what the recipes say is you would drain the rest of this off you would put your meat back in here pour your uh, consomme you made over it um, and put it in the oven however guys I can't do that because my beef short or my long beef ribs will not fit in there so behind you what you don't see <laughs> yeah what you guys don't see on camera right now I'll show you in a minute is I have a casserole dish that I'm going to use it would obviously be better if it was in here um, and this still needs let's see here I need to taste it it smells really nice but I feel like it's got more tomato really good but I am going to put some more of this liquid in there and make a mess on my stove at the same time hopefully that doesn't splash because I so do not have on an apron all right Whew. it has a really good flavor casserole dish I was telling you about. We're going to just braise it in here. This will be a later dinner though for what we're used to, but it won't be the first of, first ever. And we're just going to pour this over it. Need to get a baking sheet 
over here so I can kind of gently get this onto the baking sheet. Cover this tightly with foil. And guys, if I haven't said it yet, happy Friday. It's Saturday for you, but it is Friday for me. Oh, careful. Check that out, guys. I didn't spill it yet. All right, I'm gonna cover this. Once I find my foil. see right now there is no fat or impurities on the top but that is because I can't get this stuff to fit in the pot for it to do that away um, so hopefully when this comes out of the oven there is a nice layer of fat on top because I need that layer of fat to be able to fry the case of the the corn tortillas so we're going to cover this tightly right now what I'm going to do is oh try to not drop you guys let's see here does that work there we go maybe okay I'm going to attempt to skim the top and try to get all of the fat off of the top because this is going to be needed for cooking the tortillas so basically you see the difference in that is kind of shiny it may not be able to see on the camera but i'm just skimming the top for the fat obviously there will be some of the uh berea consomme that makes it in here as well which is fine it's just that you want to use the fat the grease that goes to the top to dip your corn tortillas in because that is what's going to allow them to get crispy like I said, I have never made this. I have just done lots and lots of reading of recipes and watching other people's videos, um, how they do it. And everybody is different. I mean, I would have loved to have just done it in my um, Dutch oven and braised the meat that way. But again, I have uh, full size beef ribs. I did not have short ribs. So use what you got. And I am going to do this right here, continue to take the grease off. Then I'm going to pull out all of the meat, set it aside, and I'm going to get it shredded up. And once I have it shredded up and I have all the grease off the top, I will bring you guys back so you can watch the next step. So, otherwise, it's just going to be a lot of me taking this off and shredding the meat. Um, yeah. All right, guys, I will be back shortly. All right, you guys, it's kind of blurry back there. I guess the, the lighting's not the best. Let's see here. Might be my overhead light. I don't know. It might be the fact that it's starting to get dark outside. And so this one, I don't know, but can you see me? I'm back. I have all of it shredded. I never realized how little meat was on beef ribs. 
Had those ribs not been like on clearance sale, I probably would not have purchased them because very little meat. However, adding those two top blade steaks, whatever it was, I actually have a decent amount. Um, I did exactly like I was told when I was reading. You take, you shred it, put it into a pot, add your consomme back, your Berea consomme back on top of it. Reserve the other consomme. It's still over there. It's actually still in the casserole dish. And um, I have my fat over here. I'm going to turn that on low to just kind of keep it warm. I have some skillets. Um, I'm going to turn them up to medium now. I will go ahead and turn my exhaust fan. I was like, what's that called? And I have a pan. And what I did was I've turned my oven down to 250 degrees so that as I make them, I can put them in there. Now, most people recommend, I'm going to put it back here. Is that hot? No. I am going to, most people recommend that you use a larger corn tortilla. Guys, what do I say? Use what you got. I utilize the food bank for a reason, to help feed my family. So, what do I have? I have street size, street taco, yellow corn tortillas. I have two packs of these. They're gonna come in handy right now because we're gonna use these. They're gonna be small, I don't care. It's gonna feed my family. I do need to get out, I don't have, I think is it, I can't even say it actually, to be honest with you. I think it's, uh, it starts with an O-X-A-C-A -A or something, cheese. Sure, whatever you would like to say, babe. Um, it's a Spanish cheese that melts really well. You can use that. I don't have that. Um, it said you could also use a quesadilla labeled cheese. I don't have that either. Um, guess what I have? mozzarella and it does say you can use mozzarella as well um or it was a was it pepper jack or monterey jack there was another cheese that it said you could use that melts really well basically you want a cheese that's going to melt really well I do remember it said though, do not use real mozzarella. If you're using mozzarella, use your, like your um, either whole milk, part skin, but don't use your true mozzarella because it has too much moisture, like your low moisture. Uh, otherwise it's, like I said, it's too much moisture. Now, again, bear with me guys. I've never made these before. Um, I don't even know if my skillets are hot enough, but we're gonna try this. So, to have everything ready to go and easy to dish out, I need a bowl. And I am just going to, I don't even know how much is in here, put some cheese into a bowl. And yes, I put on a tank top, guys. I was hot. It's rained today. I can't really, I don't really have my windows open because I can't really have my windows open because I don't want rain in my windowsill. Um, but it's, right now it says it's 62 degrees outside, but I was hot, so I put a tank top on. All right, I should be able to get more than one at a time, obviously, I mean, it's a pretty decent size. Um, I'm going to, I don't really want my hands getting all greasy again so I'm going to use my tongs we're just going to set it on top of this because this is the um the grease not the actual like it floats to the top so and then we're going to set it in a skillet same thing flip this one over Shake it off.
I've never made these guys, but I've eaten them, and they are tasty, so I'm ready, and hopefully these are super tasty. I think Josh tried to make me feel better earlier. He said they're going to taste better than a taco truck. He said everything I make tastes better, so I think he was trying to be nice, which was really sweet. My thing is, is I want everyone to understand when you cook it, it may not taste like what you're used to it tasting like. Uh, so now I'm going to put some cheese on the whole thing. And if it goes over the sides, that's fine, guys. I'm trying to work a little faster here because um, I do need to get these folded in half. So we're just putting cheese all over. And now we're going to take some of this meat and we're just going to put it on half of it. And we're going to fold it up. Well, hold on, guys. Let me do this, and then I'll try to fold it over. All right. Let me see here. Do I have... Yeah. So now we're going to fold it and kind of push it down. Make sure my heat's not too high. It's kind of splattery. Um, I still don't have an apron on, go figure, guys. Uh, let me grab an apron. Go figure. I would be the one to think, I don't need an apron for this. Oh, uh, yes, you do, honey. It said that it wants to splatter you. It said to cook approximately like three minutes and then flip because you want it nice and crispy. But to get them to stay crispy as I cook them, I am going to place them over here onto this um, cookie sheet and then put them in the oven. I'm going to move these now that they're folded over here. And this is going to be my crisp up pan and this will be my start pan. I think that'll work. And look, we got a little bit of meat right here that fell out of something. So I'm just going to toss it back in there. I don't like to waste stuff. So, all right. Same thing. We're going to dip it on the top. Flip it. Turn that down. Dip it. Flip it. Dip it, flip it, and lay it on down. All right, some cheese over the whole thing. Oh. I still think one day I want to try this with the um, uh, carnitas that I get because what I do is it's like a whole pork shoulder or a part of a pork shoulder. I get them at Aldi. They're pre-seasoned. They are so delicious. My family has only ever had it on the flour tortilla because I usually just take and put it in a um, crock pot, let it cook all day, and that night for dinner, you just put it on a tortilla and uh, toppings of whatever we have on hand, and that's usually it. All right, so fold. Don't burn yourself. Fold. Well, fold. All right, I think I'm ready to flip. Maybe, I don't know. Oh, that's kind of crispy. It's not really brown, not yet, but we can always flip it back over if needed. Going to move these guys over here so that I can get a couple more started. This one, I want to turn down just a little bit. I guess this is the grease that's coming off of the tortillas after dipping them, so 
I'm not going to complain. My cast iron skillets are happy right now. I'm just taking that meat and tossing it back in if it falls out. And we're ready to get some more going, guys. I don't know how many people can eat. I was going to, like I said, I was going to make some sides with it, like uh, refried beans and some rice. I'm not. Everybody is on board with just having tacos. So, I wish I had cilantro, but I don't. And honestly, I would probably be the only one in the house to use cilantro. Josh is one of those that has that weird gene, that genetic gene that causes cilantro to taste like soup. It is also, I commented on a comment before to let someone know, it is also a similar gene that will cause Brussels sprouts to taste very, very bitter. Some of us, like myself, I love Brussels sprouts. There are some people that no matter how they cook it, it just tastes very bitter to them. And what it is, is it is a genetic gene in your body that it just causes your body to taste things. It's some kind of receptor gene. Um, you can do the research. I don't remember which one it's called, but it just causes your body to perceive, perceive the taste differently. And so to you, it's bitter and it's gross. To me, it's delicious. Cilantro to him tastes like soap to me. It's delicious. So yeah, Berea tacos. And you're supposed to roll the R when you say it. I did um, actually Google how to say it. And let me just tell you right now, I am just your little old country girl. I cannot roll my R's. It's not gonna happen. Can't do it. Alright, these are getting nice and crispy. I don't know if they'll turn like a different color, like darker maybe. I don't know. But there's a lot of grease that comes off of it. Maybe this one I'll turn back up just a touch. I don't like how splattery it is. If I have a downfall, it's going to be the grease splattering. That is not my friend. I don't like the grease splattering on me, and I'm throwing my tongs at it. So now that I know that, yes, it's time consuming to get a really tender meat, um, but it's not super scary to make these, like, it's not super hard either. It's just a little time consuming. But say on the weekend, I have time, I can go ahead and make the consomme and the berea um, ahead of time to where all I have to do is assemble it like this uh, the day that I want to serve it. I may actually start having it a little more often, guys, because this is actually my favorite way to have tacos. I've only ever had it at a taco truck and um, there's this like Don Marcos Hispanic restaurant. I think it's Don Marcos, it might be Don something. What is it babe? The one over by belt, Don, it's Don something. Um, it's like an authentic little, um, it's, this tiny little restaurant, it's not even really like that. They have some tables in there, but for the most part, it's like take and go. But they have it, and it was really, really good. All right. I don't know. I don't want to burn them, but they're not burning. But I do want them crispity. I know I keep saying that. But I'm not paying attention to the time. And all the recipes I said, for the most part, was like three minutes on this side. Three minutes on that side. And everybody was in a consensus though to put it on a baking sheet and into the oven to stay crispy and warm. So. Super excited. I feel like that one, yeah, that one's nice and crispy. Alright, so we'll go ahead and remove these. And 
set this tray in the oven so that it stays nice and crispy. That's a lot of grease. I'm kind of tempted to just throw a tortilla in there and see what if it'll soak up some of that grease, but I want them to taste like they're supposed to. And you're supposed to dip it. All right. Let me move these on over to this pan. And let me go ahead and get this in the oven. Watch out, baby. Watch out. And you could also take and put onion on the inside when you're making them. I am not because not everybody cares for onions. I would like onions, but I'm not stressing it, guys. I don't want to. I'm not going to stress it. I'm going to enjoy them as is. I'm really hoping my youngest daughter likes them. She'll try them because they're tacos. So, I'm not worried about her not trying them. I know for a fact she'll try them. I hope she likes them. So that'll be another thing that I can say, yeah, I got her to eat it. And that would be a corn tortilla. She eats, um, it's so funny. She eats like tortilla chips with, you know, chips and dips and salsa and queso and stuff. But to just hand her one of these, she'd be like, what is that? It's the same thing. It's just, you know, and it's not deep fried form. Ouch. That one keeps biting me over there and smacking me with its grease. I mean, I could maybe see if the heat needs to be turned down some. But I'm, it's like if I turn it down, it doesn't seem to be crispity and, or crisping up. <sighs> All right. Fold. Ah. Fold. I'm very, very happy. Oh, I, I keep in, like surprising myself with these different dishes that little old country me is over here cooking because guys <laughs> um ah, turn that down when i say like little old country me i grew up um my parents are from both of them actually are from like the mountain part of uh west virginia and virginia um so they're from like the appalachia appalachia and the way I grew up cooking um, was very simple. Um, let's see here. Chinese food. Do you realize I never had Chinese or Asian food until when I was in college? Because my parents, there was no way in hell. Oh, excuse my language. There was no way that they were eating it. My dad, um, his girlfriend, because my parents are not together, uh, his girlfriend just got him a, like a couple months ago to try uh, Chinese for the first time in his life. Uh, Mexican food. I know I was a teenager before I had ever actually had true Hispanic Spanish food. Uh, and believe it or not, my parents actually fell in love with the Spanish cuisine, but not your 100% authentic. There were some things they liked authentic, such as a um, chili relleno or a poblano. They do really, you know, they enjoy those. Um, but like this, I don't think either one of my parents have, I have probably never tried it. Growing up, you made uh, pinto beans with cornbread. Um, have some onion, chow chow, meat and potatoes basically. Like you'd have a roast with some potatoes and onions, uh, ribs, pork ribs uh, on the grill, your chicken. Like it was very simple. Hamburger steak and gravy, meatloaf. But like how I've done the uh, 
adobo chicken the other night. I'm doing burrito tacos tonight. Like all these different cuisines are is not normal for me to cook in my home. I like to eat them, but I'm stepping out of my comfort zone and cooking things that I normally don't cook. And like this is splattering all over. I say it doesn't like me, but I don't know. I can't really turn it down way too much. It's already down to a three. I think what it is, is it's the, it's got the grease on it, but occasionally, you know, the actual burrito, the consomme is, um, is a liquid like water. And when water hits grease, it splatters. Let's see. All right, so some of those are ready. until I'm done doing it and I'll bring you guys back so you can see how many we have and how I'm gonna plate it up all right guys so again I don't know what is going on if my hold on y'all are still there but I'm gonna see if it's my camera it might be no All right, so it's just the lighting in here tonight. It's already dark outside. I told you this was later dinner. No, a lot later than we're used to, but it's okay. I don't have little tiny ones that I need to get to bed. They're done. They're done, guys. And we have our leftover consomme here for dipping. And, all right. So, all I'm going to do is plate them up. However, I want to do a true test because like I said, all right, hold on. Katie, come here, baby. You love tacos? Sure. All right, they're kind of hot, but I really would love for you to just go ahead and try one. Um, you can dip it in the consomme or you can try it without the consomme. Your choice. It's hot. It is inside, be very careful. It's basically beef and cheese, but it's seasoned, it's cooked in like a consomme. And I can get you a side of consomme. Do you like that? You can just go ahead and dip it in. We're family. Yeah? Oh, awesome, guys. See, another food that she does like. All right, how many do you want? Um, two, more. two more? All right, and a side of consomme? All right. She likes it, guys. So I'm going to take that as a win. Um, this is my picky kid. So, all right, these are burrito tacos. So, I'm gonna set it down at your spot, baby, so you don't spill the consomme. Babe, yeah. come on, come in there. Oh, you only, okay, well, would you like to at least, she gets off at eight tonight? Yeah. I thought she said nine when I asked her. Did you text her? It's okay, come here though. I need you to try it. I'm still recording. So. All right. Without consomme. And then if you want to dip it in, go. it is hot. <laughs> good, right? This one. Oh. Yep, it's good, right? I tried to get as much grease off of it as I could out of the actual consomme itself because the grease comes up to the top, but yeah, it's hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Delicious. <laughs> You're adorable. All right, guys. So, um, I guess I'll try it too. Mm -hmm. I like that. All right, so that's definitely a win. Like I said, I love burrito tacos. I've just never cooked them myself. And 
again, I have yet once again impressed myself. I have went out of my comfort zone and cooked something that normally I would not cook this. This would be takeout. But doing the general sauce chicken and the adobo chicken and now this and the random things that are not within my normal realm of cooking makes me want to try even more. So once we're done with this challenge um i think my next challenge i may do like i've had several suggestions some of them are the chopped you're fine baby it's dinner so go ahead like i said it's late i mean it is literally um 7 53 almost eight o'clock we never eat this late but this is a time consuming thing but as i was saying i've had several suggestions such as doing chopped, letting each one of them pick something, put it in a box, close it up and set it on my counter and that's what I gotta cook with. That could be really interesting guys. <laughs> that could get really interesting really quick. Um, but hey, I'm always up for a challenge. So we may do that one. Um, the cook uh, around the world one, that's another good one. Um, I don't know yet, but I'm loving the whole new recipe things because it's been really nice. Um, all right. Until next time, my loves, take care.